Hello and welcome to PH 109 for the summer session of 2021. So this is Explore the Universe and I am your instructor, Christina Adair. So I wanted to give you a little course introduction this morning so that you have um, an understanding of what is expected uh, in this course. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different course since it's completely online, but we will get through this together and I think uh, you should have fun. So let's get going. All right, just to introduce myself, my name is Christina Adair. I actually graduated with a, a bachelor's in engineering physics from SEMO a really long time ago. Um, I also obtained my MBA in technology, technology management, and then I went and got a master's in astronomy. Um, uh, my work experience, I've worked for the Air Force, I've worked for Atheon Missile Systems, I work for Stanford University part-time right now, um, and I also work at Southeast Missouri State University. Uh, the Stanford University thing is kind of exciting. I just actually got a job as an astronomer at Stanford. Um, it's kind of a part-time gig right now, but I'm extremely excited that I teach astronomy and I work as an astronomer, so I'm like totally totally geeking nerding out about that um, my hobbies i like knitting and painting um, i also adore science fiction um, my email is there and you can email me at any time when you have any issues or anything like that and then of course office hours are by appointment only so just send me an email and we can get something set up for you all right so i would like to welcome you to class so in this course we will have video lectures we will have um, online labs. We will have discussion questions and then quizzes on each of the chapters. There will be chapter exams, although um, I might restructure those because that is a lot of work for seven, eight weeks. Um, also, observing sessions, which we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, the final report that you have to prepare for the class, and then of course, our final exam. So I would like to tell you a little bit about what I think your keys to success are for this class, basically, and it's the keys to success for any class. If you're not, um, if you're, if you want to improve your grades, these are basically the things you have to do. So you have to participate in class. You have to, the instructor kind of needs to know who you are and know that you're trying. Uh, you need to attend a class, which once again, it's a little weird because this is online, but that would mean watching the class lectures which um, everything will be accessible in Canvas, but I believe all the lectures are gonna be on my SEMO YouTube page, uh, just so that they're in one convenient spot and um, we don't have to take up bandwidth within the Canvas or uh, within the Canvas session, sec, um, Canvas software, sorry. Blah. Anyway, moving on. So participate, attend class, and basically do all the work that is assigned to you. So that's basically the keys to success. Other keys, uh, I would say, is opening your book and looking at your book. Um, so the way this class is set up, you may use your book um, or your notes or, uh, in fact, you can use Google, I guess, to answer any of the questions that are included in um the labs or in the quizzes uh, now we do have some in the past we've used starry night as our lab for this class um, but i think i'm going to mix it up a little bit and so we'll have different types of lab anyway so keys to success participate attend class and do all your work open your book and study and actually give it some effort um, that's really keys to successful college career <laughs> so anyway I shouldn't have to tell you that, but I needed somebody to tell me that, especially my senior year. I was, I was really, yeah, my senior year was bad. Anyway, okay, moving on. All right, so this class is structured uh, in basically four different units, but I've got a couple of things written out here. Four units, yes, four different units. But, um, so the first unit, basically, we're gonna learn about the history of astronomy. Uh, we do have a rich history of uh, scientists who have contributed to the knowledge that we have. Um, also in unit one, we're going to study the science of astronomy and how we can study things we cannot touch. So we're going to delve into light and what we can tell from light, which is pretty amazing, the things we can tell from light. 
Uh, and then we are also going to talk about um, telescopes and how we use those telescopes to capture light. So that's unit one. Uh, the second unit is on the solar system. So we are going to talk about our solar system and how it uh, we think that it was formed. We're going to talk about the Earth and the Moon. We're going to talk about the terrestrial planets, then the Jovian planets, and then we're also going to talk about some of the other objects that are in the solar system. Then we move on to stars. I really like the stars module, uh, the stars unit. Um, we're going to talk about the sun because that's the star that we can study the most. We're going to talk about how we measure stars. We're going to talk about stuff between stars and we're going to talk about stars, how, how stars live and die. So stars are born, they have a life cycle and then they die. That's kind of weird, right? So uh, we're going to talk about how that happens. Then we're going to talk a little bit about galaxies. Um, and some really exotic things that are out in uh, out in the universe. So uh, we've seen some really strange things. Anyway, so we're going to talk about those. So that's the class structure. So the theme of the class basically um, is uh, I I like to put the astronomy basics here. So we are going to talk about how big objects are, how bright they are. Um, brightness is really important for understanding the physical processes and brightness of course kind of depends on how big things are how far away they are is really important uh, how fast they're moving is also important and then what are they made of uh, so we can have a gas cloud that's made of just hydrogen or we can have a gas cloud that's made of richer uh, atomic material kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about how we can figure out the composition of items. And then ultimately, the the big story of this class is the distance ladder. And we're going to get into that more. Um, that is actually more um, when we get to unit three and unit four, where we're going to talk about things that are farther out in the universe. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about how we are able to um, strictly using math um, how we are able to figure out sort of the distances within the solar system and then to our nearest stars, um, strictly math. Yay, go math, right? Um, and then how we build on some of those concepts and then we kind of use this brightness, uh, we use this brightness concept in order to figure out how far things are away. So we're going to get into that, like I said, in unit three and unit four. Um, and that is really kind of um, how this class is structured. So we'll talk about the science, basics, how big something is, bright, how far away it is, how fast it's moving, and what its composition is. And then we're going to discuss the distance ladder and how as we go up the rungs of the ladder for greater and greater distances, how our errors increase. Um, so we, because we're able to do the things that are close to us with just math, um, we are pretty confident that uh, that our measurements are correct. And then the farther and farther out we go, the more exotic sort of techniques we use, then we have more errors built in. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and then finally, so um, we talked about the different things that you will have to do in class. So we have lectures, we have discussion questions, we have quizzes. Uh, we also have the five object report that needs to be done. So the five objects that you will look at, um, there's a report template in the files uh, portion of the Canvas page. You'll basically have to research five astronomical objects and provide basic information and a photo. So there's a template in there. I, I did one um, as an example, and so you will just build upon that and do your five objects report. That is due before finals, and so I would suggest um, maybe carving out a time to start working on that as soon as possible. So um, once you get used to kind of my teaching style, you'll kind of understand more about um, how things are going to be set up. So anyway, so that one is due, um, like I said, right before finals. Then the other opportunity, the other outside work we have, Typically, before COVID, uh, we would get together and observe an astronomical phenomenon or some stars or something like that. Cosimo has a telescope. Uh, we have this um, 
we have a trailer with a big telescope in it. We can roll it out. Uh, there's a, an observatory kind of thing out in Gordonville. It's really dark. It's very pretty. Um, but because of COVID, we can't do that. So anyway, so instead, I have you do observing sessions on your own. And here are the potential um, observing sessions that we've got. So these, this is just the astronomical things that are happening during our class. So on June 24th, there will be a full moon. And so the idea is to observe the full moon as it's rising. So you need to research um, what time the moon is going to um, rise and then where it's going to be in the sky. And I'm going to teach you um, probably in the first week. Yeah, in the first week, I'm going to teach you um, how to find all that information and how to uh, communicate that information. And um, then you'll go out to a location. Um, sometimes the river campus is nice. Um, sometimes uh, the parking lot of, outside of McGill is nice to maybe see because you can get a good view of the of the eastern sky. So anyway, um, so full moon on the 24th of June. Then on July 4th, Mercury is the highest that, that it will be in the morning. So that one's a little bit harder. You'd have to um, go look at that. And Mercury is hard to spot. Um, oh, I should give you a disclaimer. You um, um, uh, Weather can sometimes get in the way. So anyway, Mercury is really hard to spot. You probably will need some binoculars for that. Um, also, you'll have to research the time and have to figure out where you are for that. Um, it's really always close to the sun, so it's really hard to observe. I think I've only seen it once. Um, Anyway, um, okay, so moving on. Then uh, on July 10th, we have a new moon, uh, which basically we can't see the moon because it's really close to the sun. Uh, and the whole side that is facing us is in shadow, which we are gonna learn about that too. Um, but then after it moves around a little bit in its orbit, so on July 11th, 12th, or 13th, you have the opportunity to see the crescent moon at sunset. Um, it's not as dramatic on the 12th and the 13th. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes people, astronomers actually try to capture the first glimpse, or astrophotographers, I should say, um, they try to catch the first glimpse of the new moon, um, and they try to get the youngest moon possible. So anyway, we'll talk about that when we get closer to that. Um, okay, so then also on July 24th, we have another full moon. On July 28th and 29th, there is a meteor shower that you could potentially um, observe. Those are a little more challenging as well. The last couple semesters, the uh, meteor showers have been uh, pretty pathetic. But um, the first meteor shower we had during the COVID stuff, one of the uh, girls in my class, she was um, sheltering at a lake. I guess Kentucky Lake or somewhere down there, land between the lakes, I think it was. Anyway, and they'd stayed up all night and they saw 14 uh, shooting stars throughout the night, but um, I think it was kind of a party around a bonfire. So anyway, I don't know if we have the option to do that, but we will try. Um, and then finally, the last big astronomical event that is occurring um, is uh, Saturn at opposition on uh, August 8th, 2nd, I'm sorry, August 2nd. So that means basically um, there is the sun, the earth, and Saturn is directly like behind us. So anyway, we'll talk more about that, but that is the other option that we have. So anyway, um, that is it for my introduction. Uh, lecture one is going to be um, up uh, and available soon. Um, I don't have it recorded yet, obviously. So anyway, it'll be up and recorded soon. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm really excited to have you in class, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.